Welcome back to Twisted Metal Customs. So today I just wanted to briefly go over how to deal with surface rust, specifically if you had a project or a restoration or something like that that has starting to get surface rust or even your daily car. So this can apply to anyone. And we're gonna start off by using minimal to no tools and then work our way up to different processes you can do, different options you can do up until power tools and all that sort of stuff. So. Okay, so we've got a piece of steel here that has nice surface rust on it. And you can just apply this to whatever issue you have at home. And I know people, you know, a lot of people in this industry and that deal with the stuff already know what to do, but there's a lot that don't. So I'm going to try to help out those beginner to novice area people that, you know, want to know what to do. So we've got a piece here, right? We are going to, first of all, descale it. So you can't just put rust converter over that because it's, as you can see, it's not descaled. You've got a lot of high surfaces. What we need to do is get rid of all the loose scaly rust. If you have paint around your surface rust area, all you need to do is just be more particular, maybe tape up around the area you're trying to uh, address. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go through with no power tools, which is pretty simple unless you've got a lot of work to do, but it's still doable. So you can use a nice wire brush. This is my welding brush. So you just wanna descale that steel. So let's just do a little section at the end. Okay, so now we've got uh, that pretty well just wire brushed off. And you can see that like the texture is a lot obviously smoother and you don't have that scaly rust there. So that's what's gonna be your biggest uh, downfall if you don't get rid of that scaly rust because even if you went along and sprayed this rust converter on here, yeah, it might work for 80 or 70% of it depending how bad the scale is or if it's flaking off, but you really need to get it to be able to penetrate deep into the steel, into that rust so it eliminates it and converts it to black ferronite. Okay, so that's the first step you can use, wire brush. Next one's just a bit of sandpaper. This is 180 grit, just what I had laying around, but you know, you want it not too coarse because you're gonna leave pretty big gouges, but I would say 180 to 240, depending on the severity of your rust and the scaly rust. This is just this example, and there's so many different ways and processes you can do, and that's why it's very confusing for new starters to sort of understand what to do. Okay, so we've got wire brush, and now I'm gonna do a bit of sandpaper next to it. Okay, so that's about the same amount of time, and you can see the difference and how much better the sandpaper obviously works. Um, so it's got most of that back to, um, yeah, nice steel for, what, 20 seconds. And the wire brush still has a fair bit of the old black steel cover coat on it as well. So, so far, sandpaper is the winner. Again, it all depends on what you're doing at home and what best suits your situation. But these are just different options. Okay, so I went and grabbed two of the previous types of rust converter that I have used. Um, there's another one somewhere, but I can't find the bottle, and it was pretty good as well. But this one far exceeds any aerosol can that I've used. I started off using the rust converter from CNC, and to be honest, it, it does work, but it really hasn't got that penetrating power like these spray-on liquid types do. So this is Furtan, or that's how I call it, Furtan. Uh, just from Repco actually, here in Australia. But I'm sure you can get it anywhere. Just follow the processes on the back because you, you know, you do need to neutralize it with water and stuff afterwards. But um, this one, I'll show you on the end where the wire brush was. It does work and it works well as long as you prep the surface area. You know how we got this here nice and clean? This will work just fine, honestly. And it, and it is primable surface. So you can paint over this if you wanted to. But if you've got like a little Hyundai XL or something, you're driving to work and you've got a stone chip and it's starting to um, flash rust or, you know, starting to get a bit of scaly, address it now. Otherwise, it's going to turn into those 
horror stories where you've seen like fist sized holes in cars and it just ruins the car. So for that, yeah, sure. Just paint over that and just use a bit of touch up paint. It should be fine. So it's hard to give you all specific information on your specific restoration on your specific rust condition. So I'm trying to do a blanket beginner to novice to intermediate type of um, how to on rust repair because there's so much information out there that's hard and honestly you can get lost very easily okay so first of all we're going to do a little bit of a spray on the end here just with the crc rust converter okay so we've got that on the end right so you can see right now it's on clear it's just like a you know water almost i've got a paper towel here normally i'll just spray that on you know, it tells you exactly what to do on the back. I'm not going to go through every single directions, but make sure you follow what they say because it's a reason why it's there, okay? Just read your TDS, technical data sheets, or your instructions on whatever rust converter you're using. So what I'm going to do is just um, try to pick up a little bit of scrap on the book. Well, you can see there that it's already turning blackish, bluey black. That's it converting the rust oxide, which is the orange stuff, it converts it to a different type of rust, a black rust basically, which is far superior for corrosion. It's, it's resilient, very, very hard for it to rust again once it's converted properly. So that will just keep turning black for over a period of time. It's a lot slower than the aerosol cans I've noticed compared to these. These just, these are nuts. Like if, you, if you've got a fair bit of work to do on a rusty car, get yourself a liquid type of rust converter. It doesn't like, they're all different, but for the three different types of liquids I use, they all they all smash it. They all they all do very well. So I'm going to spread that over in here. I'm also going to just show you this on a non-clean section, okay? And to be honest. It might do pretty good because it's not very scaly this rust it's it's only light scale rust so it probably will penetrate and because it's so thick it, it really does penetrate very well so i'll just see what that looks like later all right so we've got two different types on a nice dribble down there and you can see that uh fur tan's already turning that very quickly already and it's been what five ten seconds so i'll just put this down maybe i'll put a time lapse on Okie dokie, you can see that's about a couple of minutes later. From that point, you have, once you've treated that and neutralized it as per instructions, <coughs> you'll have a surface you can etch prime. I've seen people use etch, etch primer on bog and stuff. Personally, I would never do that. Okay, so now we've got them both neutralized and that one will wipe off with some water. So let's just get a damp rag, which can be counterintuitive, but uh, counterproductive because you're applying another wet surface to it. And you feel like you, you know, if you miss somewhere, it's gonna rust again, could be, but you just gotta be very thorough when you apply it. Okay, so once you get to this section, you have two different types of rust-treated steel, right? And whatever application you're doing it, maybe it's a little rust spot or a piece on your bonnet, whatever, you have rust-treated steel, but there's two different applications. So this CRC rust converter, it's a paintable surface. And now it depends on what you're doing, whether it's you're doing a high-end rebuild or just to do a little tiny stone chip on your daily car or motorbike or whatever, whatever rust you're dealing with, if it's scaly or light scaly rust, this is what you need to do. Or some of the basic steps you can do to stop that rust. So we've talked about the CRC. So now we've got the fur tan, which has been neutralized and wiped down and it's all clean again. So that there is perfectly clean surface metal. So it's been cleaned, treated, 
and now it's washed ready for primer because it's not a primable surface. Unless you have any DTM paints with direct to metal, you, you could use that. I know there's an industrial um, two pack you can get through De Beer or Valspar for more like say trays and stuff like that, that you can go DTM. In most cases, you will need to prime that surface. And generally that's where etch comes in. You don't have to use etch, but if it's something small, and again, my opinion differs on this. I use etch for small bits and pieces or small direct to steel priming surfaces or aluminium or galvanized stuff like that where it needs to have that real hard bite in. Or the alternative is it's too small of a job for me to mix up some epoxy primer. Cause I'm not gonna waste cups and mixing cups and filters just to spot spray a little bit, you know. That's where it comes down to you and your decision on what project you're working on or whatever you're rust treating. So. I'll leave that up to you to make that decision. But generally, yes, you can just spray etch primer straight on the exposed steel, but remember it's porous. So it will, within a few hours or days, it can already suck in moisture and then start doing that rust. Um, it will start to rust or surface rust underneath that primer. So etch primer is only good for very quick steps. I would never leave etch primer car or anything in a paddock because it will just flash rust. You just, you're, you're going backwards basically so it's hard to address thousands of different scenarios and applications where you might have surface rust so that's where everybody gets so hazy and confused about all these different people and all the forums and stuff saying, you know, you must be an egghead doing that or whatever. There's so many different ways to skin a cat. Kill the rust or convert it, put a protective layer over the top of it. So then the moisture can't get back to the steel. That's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. There's basically three to four steps in it. Use etch primer only on bare metal. If you have to paint over a primable surface or bog or something that is not steel, try to avoid using etch primer because etch works the best for etching into steel. Okay, so we've got some uh, battery operated cleaning products here um, for rust and they're not too expensive, but if you buy a lot of them, they add up. It depends on what you're doing and how much rust you have and how bad that rust is, what might best suit your situation. So this is for the easy lock. Just these are my favorite. They just quick lock in, lock out. Where you've got like a sandpaper pad like this, comes in different grits. Or you've got a big strip of discs. This is from 3M as well. That's for a drill. And that's, that's really good for uh, like, big surfaces of scaly rust or even like loose paint and stuff. So that strips off pretty well, but it does wear down relatively fast, but, and they're about $30, so they're pretty expensive. And we've got just a little like sandpaper flap disc type. I haven't really used them too much. They're, they're pretty light. They're good for internal, like if you're doing, um, not rust related, but if you're doing say your shackle rubbers on your car or suspension rubbers, that fits perfectly inside to get rid of that, um, well, that dried rubber and grease, but, but you can use that for rust, re rust removal. And the main ones that you will probably use is just the wire, wire types. So we've got like different types here. We've got like the thin singular strands, you know, very well and it's very easy to move around. And then we've got this twisted strand type and it's very hard compared to the little tiny strands and this one's a lot thicker so that one and when it spins it throws it out as well so again both these are different use cases that one's going to leave a rougher finish because the wire's thicker and tougher and this one's going to be a lot smoother finish depending on whatever you're doing so and basically on the surface rust that's all you really need to do um, to to prep it for that rust and now where it gets hard is because okay you might have like an intricate underneath your side, like, oh, I need the body or under a lip or you can't get to it. 
that's where it gets a bit harder and and you might miss something so that's where this this spray bottle that you spray it on might not be the best place because if you don't neutralize it then it says it can keep eating into it but now i've got a membership announcement coming up for youtube there's going to be a video released on that but in short i don't want to sort of spoil the big release and surprise or whatever but in short i'm going to have a membership program where instead of just saying yep you get to be a member and you pay a couple of dollars a month i want to do a basic beginners restoration course and be the go-to person for anybody with beginner questions not just rust repair not just painting or blogging or bodywork or metalwork whatever from basically you buy a car out in the bush to driving on the road that's what i'm going to be putting up detailed videos on and i can't do that too much on youtube because i'm mostly just a talking head and my normal channel will just die and it's going to ruin it because i want to be more in the entertainment part for my main channel and i want to do more in-depth raw stuff like this explaining processes of rust restoration in my membership channel so see how it goes and i'll start making videos like this more in depth and just upload it to that third tier membership otherwise just keep hanging out and join the channel thanks for watching guys appreciate it and see you next time on twisted metal customs twisty is out